Hi, in today's lesson, I'm going to show you how to use the Facebook Pixel and what type of custom audiences you should set up to start generating lists of people that you could potentially market to more effectively with your Facebook and your Instagram account. So in this lesson, I'm going to assume that you already have a Facebook Pixel installed on your website. If you don't, then please, by all means, make sure that you talk to your web developer to have that installed. So here we are into my marketing account, my ads manager account. And again, assuming you know how to get to your ads manager. And uh, what we're doing is we're gonna be managing the Facebook pixel that I just installed on our new brand site for the CRM guy uh, just this morning. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna set up what I would consider is the basic custom audiences that every business should look to do. And then there could be variations above and beyond that. Okay. So how do you go ahead and create that custom audience? Well, first thing you need to do when you get into your ads account is make sure that your pixel is actually working. And to do that, just go to the top left-hand side and go to pixels. And then you're going to be prompted to see, and then you got to, I have multiple accounts here. So I'm going to choose the one um, for the business. And I think we're going to use this one here. Let's make sure the pixel for it is here. Yeah, so here it is, the CRM guy. Uh, and two minutes ago, it received some data. So it is working and it is firing. So you can go ahead and you can click on details for that pixel. And on the top left-hand side, you could go and click create custom audiences. So that's one way that you can do that. Now, when I'm doing it, I like to go up to the top left-hand corner and go to the audiences button. If you don't see it in this frequently used list, down at the very bottom where it says all tools, uh, you're gonna go over to assets and choose audiences. So let's go ahead and do this. So you may have custom audiences that you've set up before, so you may have some in the list. What I'm going to do is I'm gonna create a custom audience. So create, and now you're posed with a bunch of different questions for things that you can choose from. We're gonna deal with website traffic. So the first thing I wanna do is make sure I'm using the right pixel, okay, if you've got more than one. Now let's set up some generic ones. So all website visitors past 30 days. So that's what I'm going to set up first. So we're going to go ahead and I'm going to call it CRM guy. And it all comes down to naming conventions. So if you're working with multiple sites or multiple data sources, then first thing is where is that? Because you want to be able to find these and choose from them later. So CRM guy being the website, um, all site visitors, and then I like to put a number which references how many days is it referencing. So again, all site visitors, 30 days, create audience. Perfect. So I'm gonna do another one. And again, this is what I recommend you do for your site. So all site visitors, again, right pixel. And we're gonna do, let's do, um, I like to do 30, 60, and 180. So CRM uh, guy, all. Site visitors, 60. Just because based on that, if you want to hit up people who are most current, then the 30 will work. And if you want to go even more current and do like seven days, you can. Um, but the three that I usually set up for every client are 30, 60, 180, um, which gives us a good range of, of audience length there uh, to choose from. And I'll do it again one more time. Website traffic, I'll see here, 180. And again, we'll choose the right pixel. All right, excellent. So this is just blanket, everybody across the site. So this would be a very generic target uh, that you're trying to reach. Now, depending on your site, so let's go look at, at my site here. You, you're gonna look at what type of pages and content that you have. So I have, you know, uh, what to consider with CRM. So if anybody clicked on this, they're probably gonna be looking at information about CRM. So what I wanna do is I want to use this page as a custom audience for people who have specifically looked at this page. So I can go ahead and I'm gonna choose the whole URL, right? So I could do that. Now, the problem with that is 
if somebody clicks on this from a, a link or from an email that you're sending out, if you've got a CRM in place, it may put uh, some tags on the end of the URL just for some tracking reasons. So what you want to do is make sure that you at least take a portion that is unique to this page. So I'm going to take everything after the main domain and just use the consideration side. So now we're going to create a custom audience website traffic. And it's going to be people who visited a specific page, which contains this part of the page. Okay. Um, so again, 30, 60, 180. So I'm going to do those and then we're going to come back and go to the next step. Okay, now that I've set those up, as you can see here, I also went on and did the speaking pages. So depending on how many categories you have in your business and how many pages, you could have you know, several of these set up. And some of them you may not use right away, but it's good to start collecting that data. Now, another point is if you are thinking of down the road to do some marketing with Facebook, um, obviously we're using pay to play now, you gotta pay to reach your audience. And Collect your data now. Get this in place. Whether you're six months, twelve months, uh, a year, or, you know, a year and a half down the road, uh, or even two months away from actually doing it, you need to get it in place now. Start collecting that data because people are coming to your website. So let's look now at what type of engagement you can create for a custom audience. So we're going to choose custom audience and now we're going to go down to engagement. I really like what Facebook has put into play here. There's a lot of stuff that you can choose from. More importantly, the first thing you need to do is Facebook page. So you're going to be referencing your Facebook page. So I'm going to go ahead here and find the page for the CRM guy. And we're going to say anyone who has engaged with the page. And by default, it has 365 days here. So I'm going to use um, social. We're going to use space CRM guy engaged 365. Okay. I'm going to create that audience. So that's anybody within the last year, obviously, uh, that would have engaged. Now it is a new page and you may say, Hey, I've only been up for a month, two months. How can it know? Well, it can't, right? It's just going to say that after a year, it's going to drop off people from that list. Um, so again, we're going to go through and I'm going to show you a bit. No, oh, I choose the wrong one engagement. I'm going to show you a bit about what I tend to do with this a little bit different than uh, the actual website. So a page here, and I'm just going to do who's engaged with the page um, in the last 15 days, right? So instead of 30 days, I'm going to do 15. So social CRM guy engaged 30. Okay. Actually, I'm going to, what I'm going to do is instead of call it social, I'm going to call it FB, Facebook, um, which gives us a good point here is how do you change this once you put a naming convention in here? So I want to change my social one um, to Facebook because we're going to actually talk about something else here. So once you get into this point, you're going to click where it says audience details and you can go back and you can actually just change the naming. And the reason for naming conventions being so important is it allows you to easily find stuff uh, in the list uh, as this list grows and you can have it uh, have, you know, 10, 20. I mean, I've seen some custom audiences in an account that were up to over a hundred different custom audiences based on, on what's going on. So we've got 365 uh, and we got 30. Okay, obviously these 30s will also be in the 365. The purpose for 30 is I know that it's relevant, right? Um, shoot. And it wasn't actually 30. It's 15. Good point catching that up here. So there we go. Uh, thanks for you uh, mentally telling me that uh, into the future. So 15 is, you know, obviously in the last 15 days, people who have engaged, uh, they're more likely to keep engaging. So that's important to have that in place. So let's go ahead and look at what else we can do with engagement with our Facebook page. So we've got to engage with the page. Um, means that they've liked, comment, or shared, okay? So that's somebody who's more likely. But we want to also be able to market to people who have at least visited your page, right? Because there was something enticing enough to get them to come to the page, but they, there may not be people who are going to engage that easily with maybe the piece of content that they saw, right? Or, or saw on your page. So I'm going to do the same thing, but I'm going to use visited page. So we're going to call it Facebook guy. Make sure that's all looking right. I'm a stickler for this. Um, visited 365. Okay. And I'm going to actually just copy that. So I don't have to keep typing that out and save us some time here. 
Perfect. So we'll do the same thing, All right? It's the whole rinse and repeat kind of idea. So visit it. And we're going to do uh, 15 as well. And you can go ahead and make more if you want. Um, these are just the basics that I usually put in place for, for most client accounts that I'm setting up. Uh, and again, I wanted to show you this because uh, you can do this yourself. Now, what else we got in this list? So we got people who engage with any post or ad, people who clicked on a call to action button, uh, people who may have sent a message to the page, or people who have saved your page or any post. Okay, um, so depending on what you want to do, you may want to add custom audiences for this. For this sake, I don't touch these yet unless these are something specific within the marketing strategy that we're putting in place. Okay, so let's go back here. Um, the other thing that we like to do is if you've got Instagram and you've got it connected to your Facebook page, you can now build custom audiences based on that. And you can see here at the time of recording this video that it is a new feature and this may be gone by the time you see this. So we're going to create the Facebook one for this. So I'm going to choose the CRM guy from here. Uh, so again, same type of thing. We're going to call this Insta CRM guy engaged 365. Right? Because now we can target people on Instagram because Instagram is owned by Facebook. All right. So we're going to go custom audience one more time here. Engagement. Instagram, CRM guy, there we go, 15. Splendid, okay. Once you start to put these on here, you're gonna see it's gonna say populating and sometimes you're gonna get down, see if I have one here, uh, audience too small. Um, the reason for that is that it, they wanna make sure that it's a certain size before they can actually um, generate that audience. So you may get that right away because you don't have enough data coming through. But over time, these numbers will start to grow. Now, what other um, audiences could you set up? Well, for example, here, there's customer files. So if you've got a list, maybe it's an email list, somebody's opted into a newsletter, or you got a CRM, you can actually upload an Excel CSV file to Facebook, and it will go and match profiles that are, are matching the data in that. So it's going to look at email addresses, uh, phone numbers, names, and try to cross-reference them and make the connections that are in there. And I strongly suggest uh, that you do that for your business. So take your list, export it, and go from there. Um, offline activity. Um, this is for a list of people who have engaged in store or by the phone or through offline channels. Uh, if you choose this, um, there's no integration right now that I use for anybody for this. So um, don't worry about that part if you see it here. Now under the engagement, you've got other options in here. Uh, for example, lead forms if you're using that full, uh, full screen experiences or video. I like to use video. If my clients are using video on their Facebook page or they plan to, then what you can do is you can create engagement here. Now, you do need to have um, videos upload it to your page for you to be able to do this. Um, because if it says people who have viewed at least three seconds of your video, it's going to make you choose what video it was, right? Now, that's not the page we're using. And if I choose mine, there's no videos yet. So this is something down the road that you can put into your planning to say, hey, after we do a couple videos and upload them, let's go ahead and create a custom audience based on people who have engaged with that, right? So when you look at this, the different types that are in there, you've got people who have viewed three seconds, 10 seconds, or percentages. And depending on the types of videos, I mean, if you've got a, a five minute video, then you know what, 25% is probably better than just three seconds uh, that are on there. Three seconds is pretty quick. 10 seconds, you know, if they make it over 10 seconds, they're gonna watch uh, a bit more. 95, these are the real hardcore fans that are out there, okay? So you can create custom audiences for all this kind of stuff. Now, why do you want to have these custom audiences? Well, more importantly, let's look at your website and we'll use this one again as a reference because that was what we're talking about here, is that to effectively market online these days, you need to be in the different spaces and the, the conversation, the communication needs to go through the different platforms. So if I was out doing a Google search and I came across this website and I was like, hey, or I saw Sean speak or saw myself speak, obviously, um, and I checked out the website and I was in here and I was like, oh, what to consider? I'm, I'm somewhat interested in, in CRM and I'm reading through this. It would make sense that once I'm done here, if I didn't actually 
contact and, and follow through, that when I went to Facebook through my regular day, I would start to see some more content from the CRM guy and talking about CRMs. How do they know that? Well, because I was on the page, I got added to that custom audience. So now you can go ahead and create different ad sets, ad campaigns, ad sets, and different ads, and have them specifically show to people who fall within these custom audiences. You continue the conversation along. And the reason for the, the uploading your customer list is if you want to have longevity and you want to cross sell and upsell and have referrals, maybe this content that people see online from you uh, is a bit different once they become a customer, right? So if you have customers who aren't on your email list or your blog subscription list or subscribing to your podcast, you could upload uh, the list of those people and then say, okay, market this ad that talks about our blog or our podcast to people who are our customers but aren't on this subscriber list, right? So you can do a bunch of if-thens and things of that nature. But what we're talking about just in this video, just to wrap it up here, was how to create these custom audiences. If you go ahead and create all the different varieties that are here, these will become helpful down the road once you start to run some promotions. But by all means, make sure that you go ahead and have a consistent naming convention because it's gonna make it a lot easier for you down the road. And if you wanna go a step further and you say, okay, I created this one because of this certain reason and, and for one reason or another, let's say it's, it's this one, and you went in here um, and you ran out of characters and to describe it here, you can always say show description and now you get a hundred characters and you can write a bit more about why you created this custom audience uh, so that down the road, you know exactly what it is for. So hopefully this was helpful. If you need some help creating your custom audiences, getting your pixel on your website, please, by all means, reach out to me, uh, whether it's at Blue Cow Marketing or you want to go to our Facebook page at the CRM guy and send us a message. Uh, please, by all means, do that. I am here to help and I like helping small businesses succeed. So thank you very much and have a great time growing your business. Mm -hmm.